operative word on Ask a Rabbi on this date is past. Past? Okay. Past. You this passed. Is, I passed? Oh, I that kind of passed. P-A-S-S-E-D. Got it. <laughs> okay. Hello. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. And this is Rabbi Shafir Loeb of Congregation 8. I am your Jewish home on the Treasure Coast. The, the rabbi got her 91st degree, whether she needed it or not. <laughs> Well, it's not a degree. It's uh, the license that's required for state licensure in Florida. Okay. Even though you have a doctorate in that degree. It doesn't matter what degrees you have. You still <laughs> have to pass this exam oh. to indicate your base level that you meet a minimum standard. And I think that's a, that's a good idea. Okay. okay. As annoying and as much as I hate tests, I understand the idea just squeaking through a degree right you know what do you well, right so you know what do you call the guy it. who finishes last guy or gal who finishes last in medical school they're still a doctor oh i okay okay no no so, i now i get it right now i get it yeah. so an exam serves as a minimum standard kind of check gotcha okay. and so you know as i said much as i dislike it and I intensely dislike exams, even though I have to give some as a professor, I still don't like them. Hmm. Okay. I don't like taking them any more than my students do. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. And you certainly take it enough. And yeah, in I your have time. taken yeah. enough in my time and uh, I still have to take the CPCE required by Liberty for graduation, which is the practice for this exam. So hopefully I'll do well on that. And then I also have to now, take- Now, when is that? That's in March. So we'll deal with Good that. Good grief. Yeah. They just one right after another. Well, you're supposed to actually take the other one first. Yeah, you know, leave it to me. Oh, well. Hey. Yeah, well, basically the Florida said, we don't care when you take it. We consider you a registered intern. Once we give you that designation, then you have two years to take and pass the exam. Oh, okay. So here's here's the real piece, right? I stop being an intern. I start being uh, what's called a, a full clear license in September, September 4th of 2025, but who's counting? <laughs> it's 100 weeks that you you have the you have intern. intern. You have to intern. Doesn't wow, matter how many 100 hours you get. weeks? Yeah yikes that's a long time yeah that's two years yeah it's two years it's four weeks short of two years wow so and that's okay it's what it is okay well hey yeah it is what it is i can't change it so if, if i had a way to change that i would certainly do what i could for that but i don't so we won't so how much time do you have to do that while you're a professor at two colleges i have some time i don't do a ton of clients i do have a couple openings if somebody would like to connect with me for working on some project of theirs and uh, so i do offer that i offer family and couples therapy and uh, other types of counsel other mental health counseling as well if you've got some anxiety or those kinds of issues yeah let's talk well, you're in the right place if you need to do mental health therapy. Okay. This place really needs it. I hear you. We're not going to do that because that would be a dual relationship. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it, yeah, it's I'm, I'm enjoying it and I squeeze an hour here and an hour there into the schedule and mm -hmm. that's how it's done. And I tend to do it in evenings or afternoons or evenings is when I can there usually scare up some time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Wow, well, congratulations. Or on, I actually do my supervision hours with Liberty on Sunday, which might surprise people. So the, in fact, I'm, I'm doing a student presentation this weekend. Oh, boy. Oh, it, now, this is uh, video, I presume, all video. Yes, it's, it's on the camera mm -hmm. it's 
they use a product called WebEx, which is like Zoom oh, yeah. for those who sure. don't know it. Yeah, like Zoom. Yeah. Right. Very much like Zoom. It has share screen and, and a chat function. It's a business type. Of... Yeah. It's another version of, yeah. of Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm used to having all kinds of cameras. and But I will share an interesting piece that occurred during the exam. And for anybody who's taking a licensed exam and per, uh, Pearson view is how the exams are done at home. And they're actually kind of interesting. They watch you as you take the exam, you take pictures all around of the exam of the room. But here's the piece that you kind of got to know, which is that if your camera isn't unlocked, you can't take those pictures and they don't tell you how to do that. You're speaking Greek. Exactly. Right so I came up with that, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a tech dummy, but I had no idea how to unlock my phone. So <clears throat> I don't know about Androids. I no longer have an Android phone. I did it one time, but I don't now. But on an iPhone, what you do is you hit the top right corner of the phone and swipe down. And then there's a little lock there that you have to hit to unlock. It defaults to locked. I don't know where you can change that setting. I, we didn't find that out, but you can change it on there. And then that'll allow you to take the pictures, but they don't give you that instruction. So if anybody's taking wow. that exam, please remember that. For me, that was, it shot my tension through the roof. And it's on the iPhone. And it's on the iPhone, right? <clears throat> you, <coughs> so there is some way you do something with the, when you, log in that you give them permission to get the pictures from your phone to get you get the app on your phone from them and you have the app on the computer open and they link they talk to each other and you go and you take the pictures and it sends them to your proctor and yeah i had trouble with that until my husband fortunately <clears throat> excuse me did a google search while i was just about panicking in the test room. So do you use Mr. Wemo uh, on that? No, you don't use Mr. Mevo on it, but I did use my, you have to have your phone, quote unquote, out of reach, but nearby. Okay. In case they're going to call you. Oh, okay. Yeah. And of course, I keep the ringer off because I don't answer it in class and I don't an obviously answer it while I'm here in the show or and clearly not while i'm doing services but in any event of all of those the um you probably only get telemarketing calls during your service i have gotten members who have called me during services no, oh come on that one kind of surprised me yeah you would think that a member would know when services were but they were simply thinking of wanting an answer from the rabbi so text oh her. no you i can't believe that that's <laughs> I didn't at the time either, but I do now. Wow. So, Amazing. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't think about what time it really is and what others are doing. You simply want an answer and texts in our society are considered non-intrusive and a quick way to get an answer. And it doesn't necessarily get you the answer if it pertains to something dealing with the service during the service. <laughs> So anyway, oh, yeah, no. people are people. Yeah, there you go. Well, congratulations. So thank you. Again, that's so great. I'm happy for that. The other thing I'll warn people is turn off your malware and your McAfee or any of those protection things because they don't allow that to be on while you take the exam. Because they have your computer. Wait a minute. Wait they have, a well, minute. Well, they have your computer and you're not, you don't have any other windows open, so it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to wow. come down. Okay. So huh. you can turn it back on as soon as you log off, but they, it, they lock down your computer. You give them permission to do that. And they do that so that you can't just open another window and go cruising. Oh, right. You're not allowed to have any straight tablets or other computers in the room. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's pretty heavy. So. stuff. Yeah. It is. Well, they don't. They want to make sure, you know. So they sit there and they watch you. I'm sure they watch. I don't know how many faces you can watch on a screen 
they also, I'm sure, record it and have AI tell them if you're doing anything that looks like you might be cheating. It, it, to me, it just wasn't worth it. It was just like, do it, get the test, and get it done. Make sure you're not playing pickleball or something. While well, you're I don't think you have test. time to play pickleball while you're... You don't have time for that. You don't have time for Pac-Man. Remember that one? Oh, God. Boy, you are dating us. I know. Or oh. any of those things. Oh, my. I actually Pac-Man. have Pac-Man on my phone. You can get Pac-Man. There is a retro app out there. Is it really? There really oh, is. Oh, my God. So you can play Pac-Man that. on your phone. You don't have the joystick, oh. but you can do it on your phone. Oh, wow. Crazy. Boy, Crazy. That... So here's Atari. How's that for dating? I don't, are they even in existence anymore? I have, I have no clue. There you go. Clue. Listeners, anybody here ever have an Atari set? Oh. Bring back old memories. Sure, hundreds of our listeners do. Um, yeah. If not sure. more. I'm yeah. sure lots of people in the world do. Yeah. It's wow. the, a very different world because, as you know, when you were young, you didn't have a cell phone. Your no. parents really had no idea where you were after school. Oh, they knew where I was. In detention? Well, that was part of it. <laughs> um, it's, you know, with the seven foot three nuns of the rulers. Um, <laughs> not, um, not that you exaggerate much. Little league fields. Oh, okay. Most of most are basketball courts. Yeah, they, my mom knew I was never home before sunset. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was. I was always... The whole, we lived on kind of like a cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. All the neighborhood kids were together. Yeah. You know, and uh, there were just a couple of us that went to the Catholic school. But as far as the neighborhood goes, all the kids were together. Yeah. All the time. I mean, it was. You well, know, it's we, just what you did. You came home from school, you dropped your stuff off, maybe had a snack and headed out the door. Yeah. did a minute and a half worth of homework. and then Yeah. <clears throat> Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully kids are doing more than a minute and a half of it, but <laughs> right, the, the idea was to optimize the daylight. There you go. So, yeah. And, of course, in California, you didn't have snow fights, so. Uh, that's true. That's uh, We didn't have snow days. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Other kinds of days, but. <laughs> yeah. We had surf days, but that's a whole different story. Uh, yeah, those I don't think were authorized. <laughs> and the seven foot three nuns got uh-huh. us after that. Seven foot three, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe it was just the paddles that were that big. I can't remember. It's... <laughs> the boards of education. Yes. That's uh, that's what we called them. Yep. Yep. The boards of education. And unfortunately, we don't do that to children these days. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of the things that I often run into, that parents think that that's okay. It's one thing to do it if your kid is running out into traffic, grab them and give them a quick response. But Well, yeah. Because you don't want them to run out into traffic, but not as a, not as a regular thing. The problem with it is, is that it teaches that violence is an answer to your problems. And that's not a healthy dynamic. There are healthier ways to resolve your problems than punching things. And that's just part of what kids need to learn in order to mature. That's that's the bottom line. If if that's your response, that's not a mature response. And we don't we don't achieve peace until we learn to stop being violent. Oh, well, I wish you yeah. Friends in Israel. And yeah, that's, uh, I was afraid you were going to go there. Yeah. Uh, oh. That is, it's just a, it's a horrible situation. And, and, you know, and of course they nixed the peace deal last night. And I'm thinking, you know, I know you want to get rid of Hamas, but good grief. If yeah. you destroyed three quarters of Gaza, I mean. I, I think that it's one of those situations where you ask, where are the adults? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the problem is they are adults that are, well, no, they're of age. They're not. Oh, there you go. Okay. I got you. Yeah. All right. Just because you've achieved a chronicle age doesn't mean you've achieved an emotional, very true, cognitive and spiritual age. Very true. So that's a challenge. Uh, uh, 
you don't make peace with your friends. You only make peace with people with whom it isn't there already. Yeah. And the way to eliminate Hamas, here's the bottom line, folks. The way to eliminate Hamas is take away the power that they have. By pounding somebody, you don't take away their power. You actually cause their victims to run to them because who else is going to defend them? Not you. And and I just, you know, and of course, who knows what you see on the news? In, in his, is it, said, said the person working in the news industry. I know. And is it handout video from Hamas that you're seeing? I mean, well, of course, you know, and, every, and none of it's everybody labeled spins. Anymore. Everybody spins. Yeah, you're right. And it's almost impossible to independently verify anything. And there are some really horrible people in the world who get away with doing some really horrible things. There was. So I'm thinking back to 9-11, and I can remember standing in Tucson and asking a, a group of maybe 200 women, I think it was a Hadassah meeting or something like that, and I was talking about, I was, I was asked to talk about 9-11, and so I did, and the question I asked was, did they get away with it? And the answer is yes, they did. It's done. You can't undo it. That's the piece. The way to, to stop it is to prevent it. The way to handle it is to take away the avenue, the need to aggress in that fashion. Wouldn't you think that in Gaza, especially, that education would be a big part of defeating Hamas? It would be. There is, there are narrative, there are mutually exclusive narratives in the area. And I would go so far as to say none of them are accurate. They all spin. Yeah. And yeah. they twist and they hide and they other the out group. And what do I mean by that? It's the tendency, it's a very primitive tendency in human beings and it worked when we were hunter gatherers you want the resources for your group for your genetic group because it maximizes the likelihood of your gene surviving so that's a species survival tendency and you view other family groups of the same basic 23 chromosomes pairs of chromosomes as competitors for those resources and so you try to minimize the ability of the outgroup of using resources that you might need. That works at a time when resources are scarce. They're not. They don't need to be. We can help the It's not Pollyanna, named for a Hawaiian goddess, by the way, um, who helps the poor and the farmers, which is where I'm going next. Because we in the U.S. pay farmers not to grow crops oh yeah half for decades half for yeah almost centuries at this point it's been a long time we've been paying farmers not to grow things would that we could grow that food harvest it and feed the hungry what a radical idea let's take some of the money that we spend on prisons and warehousing people and put it into feeding people and teaching people basic skills Let's actually rehab people. I know that's radical. Let's teach people. Let's find a way to work with people. Let's teach them to manage their anger, to curb their aggression, to handle situations effectively and, and constructively. I remember doing a story. Gosh, I was in San Diego at the time, uh, inside San Quentin. And um, there was this one inmate who was, uh, if you want to call him the jailhouse lawyer. Okay. And so, and, you know, leave it to the crazy Jesuit priests who gave him a scholarship to the University of San Francisco Law School. Okay. Magna cum laude. Yeah, because he had no distractions. He could study as much as he wanted. And this guy apparently is 
turned out to be a very well-known San Francisco lawyer. And he's and he represents the downtrodden. Yeah. There, there's we are as a species harming ourselves by making a group of people the have nots. Yeah. We just are. There's there's brain power there, there's skills, there's artists, there's musicians, there's many different folks who could contribute meaningfully and they're not contributing meaningfully by making license plates and other such state labor that they're not getting paid for and if we could restore human dignity if we could help people have human dignity we'd have a lot less issues we just would it's the the amazing thing to me, and I know I've talked about this other times, and I talk about it in my classes quite often, if we compare what they do in Germany, a developed country, a first world country, they have one of the lower, lower incarceration rates, that's how many people are in prison, and they have a very low recidivism rate. Their, their criminals, as a rule, don't want to go back. Mm-hmm even though they have reasonably appointed rooms they have decent food that they cook they learn a trade they are work with people on how to manage their anger they're required to go to through therapy it's part of their program and the wardens are psychologists wow that's the interesting piece this the wardens have psychology degrees and when you hire in People want to work in the corrective uh, field. They, ha they only accept about 10 to 15% of those who apply. You've got to have the right bits and pieces. And they don't carry weapons in the prisons. They don't carry guns. I shouldn't say weapons. They have, I think they have tasers. But they don't usually use them. It's very calm. It's very clean. It's, it's not warehousing. They have small numbers of prisoners to the guards and the ratios are healthy and they have a lower crime rate than we have. So they imprison less, they don't have much recidivism and they don't have a high crime rate compared to us. Well, you talk about clean. I mean, just the opposite is like Folsom Prison. Yeah. It is, oh, it's horrible. It We're, is. Where, Horrible. And if you go to a German prison, the people are wearing street clothes. They, the prison walls are fences, not walls, so that the, the inmates can see what the outside world is and desire it. And they're planting, they're taking care of animals, they're gardening, they're uh, playing chess, checkers, cards, whatever they choose to. They're running, they're walking, and they have the key to their cells. Hmm. And in those cells, they have a table and chair. They Today, I'm sure they all have computers in there. They historically had a phone. They may have a cell phone, I don't know. They may still be required to use the landline. But yeah, they had many more things than what our prisoners have access to. They cook their own food. And yes, they have knives and forks in those kitchens because you have to have those things. Sure. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. 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 No, I get it. There's I, a there's a wonderful line. It's a whole different mindset. Yeah, it's it is. It's exactly a whole different mindset. And it's based on the idea that a person's autonomy is not to be violated. They are to be treated like a human being. And that's the first preamble or the first article in the German constitution, of course, written after Germany did all those horrible things. There's no question that that happened, but when they rebirthed themselves, they rebirthed themselves using Kantian ethics. So they don't have the death penalty. They, they just treat people differently. And culture has an effect. It really does. We have a very violent culture in America, and it doesn't have to be. It just doesn't have to be. Yeah, I, uh, 
pretty close to a basketball coach who was uh, started his law enforcement at Rikers Island. Oh, and he just, he's got stories that, you know, make your hair stand up. And, you know, you just think, wow. And he was 21 years old, right out of college. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really shocking. And, and that's not to say that German prisons don't have problems with drugs. They do. They have problems with gangs. They have all the social problems that everybody else does, but they manage them differently. And that's part of it. We tend to react with, do something to me and I'll shoot you. That's not the best first response. It just isn't. If we could teach people to manage things. And I get it. We need, do need to protect ourselves from people who would do heinous crimes. If we yeah. could. I mean, you, you look at like even the last incident in Kansas City where the two of the three people or maybe all three that are in custody are all minors. Yeah. They all had guns. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it's not the way to settle things. No, it's not. But we've made it just too easy. Yeah. We've, we've made it just too easy. And, and I'm not advocating banning guns. That's, that's not where I'm going. There's nothing wrong with doing target shooting. There is a value in having something to defend yourself if you're really being threatened. Mm -hmm. The optimum piece there is really being threatened. And as you well know, uh, being a military person, you, you, you have you, a weapon. You train and you keep that military strong. And, and I do believe it is a deterrent, but... It's a deterrent that really should never have to be used. There's a, there's a piece of power. So here's the, here's the real piece. If you have to aggress to exert your power, you really don't have it. Ooh. There's Ooh. a Shafirism for you. Ooh, if you I have like to that. aggress to exert your power, you don't have it. You've already lost it. I love that. So you're coming from behind anyway. And you know, assault is threatening, and that's you shouldn't have to do that either if you really have power. Yeah. But and I get it that some people are addicted to power. Power is a very addictive substance. It really is. And for some people, it really kicks off the reward system in their brains. I get that. We can work on that. We can make that less of a drive if somebody wants to. That's the operative piece. If people have to want to. And that's up to the culture. I think it's up to the culture to make being peaceful and finding peaceful, intelligent solutions has to be valued and cherished and not looked down on. It's small people that look down on that and poo -paw it. And we need to not let those bullies run the world. And the way to stop bullying is by stopping being quiet, by standing up for what's right, for standing up for the underdog in a healthy way. And that doesn't mean letting the, the underdog get away with things. That's not healthy either. So it, it, takes, it takes more work. It takes more effort. It takes more resources. But the issue is never a lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness. Uh-oh, another Shafirism. That's, that's the key. You've got to use intelligence and dignity to come up with workable solutions. And does that mean that some people may need to be locked away until you can figure out how to help them reintegrate into society? Yes, it probably does. But it means treating them with dignity while you do that and recognizing that that's a last resort for those individuals. Just as we uh, do take care of people who are violently insane, right, who have violent disorders mm -hmm. and, and cannot control them, 
that does need for their safety and the safety of others the duty to warn people need to not hurt each other not themselves and not each other <coughs> so the joy of my cough i've always got it i've always got that cough i'm it was, still trying to get rid of the one that i picked up on the bus that cough came in handy in the supermarket during covid Oh. I only needed one of those to clear the aisle. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, <clears throat> there you go. You have the whole store to yourself. Um, I certainly did the area near me, even though I was wearing a mask. Yep, that's funny. Yeah. 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 Boy, nah. just think, we're still talking about COVID. Yeah, we're going to talk Three about Three years it. later. We're going to talk about COVID for a long time. It's not gone, gone. And it's not going to be gone, gone. And the people who want to be afraid of vaccines because they're a little bit bent that way are going to continue to be afraid of vaccines and think that, oh, the government's putting a mind control device in you. I, I think not. <laughs> not smart enough. Oh, I'm sorry. I... <clears throat> well, think of the resources that would require. Yes, that's very true. It's just... It doesn't make sense. It's just not. It's just not viable. And uh, yeah. <sighs> wow. So, tell us about your week at school. So, any any surprises in your class? No, no surprises. Classes are going mm -hmm. along just fine. I've of course got my Wednesday morning class at IRSC and my. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday class at Kaiser. So I'm a little bit busy I'm teaching child psychology and abnormal psychology. Okay. This what, week, this what month. What is abnormal? Abnormal psychology? psychology looks at disorders and things that are not within the healthy functioning range. So it looks at eating disorders. It looks oh, at okay. personality disorders. Yeah borderline histrionic, schizophrenic, there's a, there's a whole, there's three clusters of personality disorders. So we spend some time with the DSM and learn what the diagnoses are, what the criteria, or actually what the criteria are for the diagnosis. And then people can use that when they're working with people to help pick out the best treatment plans and the best goals for those individuals. Mm -hmm. it, the goal is not just to find the magic number, but rather to be able to access the tools that come along with recognizing what are the best ways to work with it. Okay. So for example, wow. with borderline personality disorder, you're going to want to probably use dialectic therapy, which is a specific kind of working with a client. Other disorders benefit from other disorder, from other uh, treatment plans. Some disorders require a bit of a chemical response. There really is medication that's needed because the disorder is caused by an imbalance of certain chemicals. And sometimes people are born in a way that that doesn't work normally. Other times the environment damages the natural system that's in our brains and in our bodies. And we need help. And the key there is, is to work with people who are gonna help you, help you find a solution. So you hear about like minors having certain types of diseases and stuff, not just physical, but mental as well. And it's so easy for me to understand. Of course, I don't like going down a couple miles into the earth anyway, um, that that would be a tough situation for them. Yeah. It's, I th what, so the challenges with medication, there's a couple of things. One, somebody takes the meds, they feel pretty good because the meds stabilize the chemical imbalances, and then because they're feeling good, they think, well, I don't need the medicine anymore, without realizing that it's the medicine that's helping them feel better. That's true with some anxieties, it's true with some anger issues, it's true with some uh, some other disorders with a number of them. Now, as a therapist, can you 
prescribe? I, I don't prescribe. You can't, you can't no, prescribe, I can work right? with a doctor, though. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And and that's a good idea because the doctor is going to look at a different picture of your health, and he's going, he or she's going to look at what are the things going on in your body, what chemicals, what other chemicals are you taking by choice or not, and how do these things interact? Because it is important. I was just thinking, actually, on my way into the studio, how easy it is to upset some of those chemicals in your body. We are very carefully balanced. And if something doesn't work quite right, like diabetics who, oh, need, yeah. who need to be insulin sure, maintained, sure. it's because their body has either never or stopped producing insulin. And yes, there are ways to work with that. And maybe you're one of those people whose body can re now we're realizing you can relearn your body can recover and start to produce insulin. And I think that might be true with some mental disorders. You might be able to start to create the various chemicals and hormones that your brain needs in order to function. There was a great little video that actually showed um, a little a, a one of the creatures creatures is not the right word one of the mechanisms in the body dragging a, a, an endorphin right to move the the hormones where they need to go and this is a picture of happiness was the, the caption underneath it because the receptor that's going to pick that up is looking for it mm -hmm. and so our body does that we don't think of that but our bodies are constantly moving chemicals around when you have that aha, yes, that please moment, or you look at the fuzzy picture and you get the endorphin release, or you do the, the running or the exercising to get those chemicals, or in my case, you paint and see the paint come out the way you like it, that releases those feel-good hormones. And the key is releasing those feel-good hormones in a way that's constructive and not destructive. So I do the paintings, and yes, if I don't start selling them really soon on Etsy or somewhere else, I'm going to be overrun with painted canvases. But and I love some the of the new that. ones look awesome. Well, thank you, and I am I've I have captured some of that, and I'm now going to try to to make some videos of me actually pouring it and showing what I do to create those paintings. So that's my next goal when I have <clears throat> something called spare time. Now, is that relaxing to you? It is very relaxing to okay. me. Okay. It is incredibly relaxing, and I highly recommend it. In fact, um, it, it, I'm thinking of different ways to offer that. It, the paintings don't take long. The hardest part is the preparation, the getting the pieces together, getting ready for it. But once you know how to do that, it doesn't take very long. One of the paintings that I did, the the red, is it the red and white one? No, it's the multicolored one, the, right before the red and white one, or the pink, pink, navy, and red that I did. I did one that was leftovers because I had done painting well, yeah. with the students at Kaiser, and we're going to offer that again as an activity uh, there. We're working on getting that together so that once a month, maybe people can actually Did do the that. students like it? They loved it. They had a okay. great time with it. That's interesting. Okay. And the when they were finished, of course, they didn't always use up all of a bottle of paint. So there was, you know, this little teeny bit left in this bottle and this teeny. So I poured it all into a cup and did what's called a neat cup, which is I took the cup and I put the canvas on it, flipped it over and release the cup and it just goes wherever it wants to go and with all the different bits and pieces of paint it was a, it's a really cool uh, canvas and i've got that one so yeah that took i collected the paint in the cup while i was talking to somebody on the phone wow so i just sat there at my counter and just mm. poured paint into the cup i had the canvas already set up where i was going to do it and I just walked over to it at the end of the phone call, did the flip and done. And and then it's just a matter of stretching the paint out. So the actual paint was less than 10 minutes. So now the Kaiser students are older than your IRC students on the whole, right? On the on the average. I mean, we yeah. have we have some young folk that have come right to Kaiser from high school. Uh, 
IRSC, of course, has the dual enroll students, which pulls the average a little bit lower and doesn't have as many second career students. Right, right. That makes Kaiser sense. Kaiser that makes is sense. very appealing. Uh, we have a large veteran population at Kaiser. It's very easy for them to use the VA benefits at Kaiser to sure. get an education and the VRE, the, the vocational rehab education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That works really well. So we've got a very high veteran and uh, yeah, and I speak veteran, so. As you is one. Yeah, so the, the yes. I don't the, think I've ever asked you, your husband was too? Oh yeah, my husband actually is a Vietnam vet. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Ugh. So, and, and that was kind of cool. So I will say that we went to um, the Masonic Lodge down in Stewart yesterday. They had patriotic night and they actually did a special thank you to the Vietnam veterans. Nice. So that was kind of nice for him to actually have his sacrifice recognized. Yeah. Man. And they were candid about it. They talked about drugs in the military. They talked about this and that and good and bad. And the veterans were, were interesting. It was interesting to see how many vets there were there. The Vietnam guys and ladies just had no respect coming back. No. That was horrible. People blamed horrible. them for the war when they had no choice in it. One of the things that I did, my husband had, was drafted. And during the evening, I turned to him and I said, you know, what was your number? And he said, 60. Hmm. And I said, so you knew going to college that as soon as your college deferment was over, you were going. Bingo, he's gone. Yep. Yeah, and he did. And uh, yeah, and I think it's tragic that when they came back, they came back to at best being ignored. Well, it was a lot worse than that. At least with the people yeah. that I know. Yeah, some of them got spit on, oh, yeah. punched up, all oh, kinds of, yeah. you know, people's aggression. I'm sorry, if you're going to protest the war, do it nonviolently, please. There's something oxymoronic about fighting to stop fighting. It just, it, it never mind. I'm, yeah, let me I, tell I'm you about drifting too far. Yep. Let me tell you about People's Park. Um, I was in the middle of that several times up in Berkeley. I, they call it berserkly for a reason. <laughs> um, and, and, and it was violent. I mean, there's yeah. no other way to get around it. And it doesn't need to be. There's no reason for it. Uh, one of my listeners here is saying, you know, Martin Luther King about how to protest peacefully. Yes. And my father of blessed memory actually walked with him and many, 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 many years ago. And of course, there's Gandhi. There are ways to do civil disobedience that do not lead to violence. Exactly. And isn't that really the goal? The goal is change, not who's bigger and stronger. There was a song that was out that was, you know, my dog's bigger than your dog. Oh, my I, dog's yeah. bigger than yeah, yours. Yeah. His name's King and he had puppies. My dog's bigger than yours. Yeah. Uh, which pokes fun at that. And the other one that came from that vintage and is quite cynical is what did you learn in school today? Remember that one? Oh, yeah. What yeah, did yes. you learn in school yeah. today? Yeah. Yeah. I do, I do remember that. Yeah. Wow. And somebody, I'm trying to think of where it was. Somebody brought up Johnny Cash as somebody who spoke the truth when he was asked to do something. We need, we need to support our ideologies, but we also need to recognize that being candid and honest and, and treating people with dignity is really the bottom line. It really, really is. And the people who don't do that, we as a society need to figure out how to curb that. Why is that so difficult for so many people? Because lashing out in a temper tantrum is something that some children never learn to control. And just as if you take the little puppy and it bites you and you think that's cute, it's not. It's not an acceptable behavior. 
And if you don't discipline the puppy, you will have a biting adult on your hands. Mm. Yeah. Dogs need to learn that. Humans need to learn that. We need to have we need to have a way to help people be the best they can be, regardless of where they start from. And that might sound like an equity kind of thing, and, and maybe it is, but it's a systemic thing. Help people be the best people they can be. And then you will have so many more endorphins in the world and so much more peace and so much productivity. Imagine what we could accomplish if we didn't have to spend all the money on defending ourselves. Now, I realize that some <clears throat> weapons manufacturers would go out of business. They have a, you know, it, it reminds me of the guy who had a windshield replacing business right, who went around smashing windshields. We need to watch that sort of behavior and check it early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So one of my listeners is definitely going on. He's, she's saying about um, friends of the Jewish people. And uh, yeah, if we could teach our kids to debate and to believe in freedom of speech in a proper way, not in a way that demeans or demonizes anybody. That's, I think, another piece. That, so let's talk about freedom of speech a minute. That doesn't mean that you are free from the consequences of your actions and your speech. Right, exactly. You may be, you know, it might be that we can't stop you before you're going to say it, but in our society, you can be sued for it. You can be incarcerated for it. You're not allowed to hurt others in your freedoms. My fourth grade teacher, Mr. Young, said it well. He said, your freedom ends one inch from anybody else's nose. I don't know who he was quoting. I know that's a famous quote, but, but it's what he taught our class. And I think that's important. And you can stop bullies from beating up people. It just takes speaking up and not letting them get away with it. Not saying things like boys will be boys or, oh, she's just a tomboy. That's not acceptable. Those are not acceptable behaviors, period. Self-defense is one thing, but beating somebody up is not. Right. Correct. Yeah. And it was said, I think, very well. I was Interesting things happened to me on the tram in Atlanta. <laughs> but there was a, I was waiting, I was riding between terminals on the tram, and the door is open, and a, a gentleman with two young boys on his hands and the older one turns to him and says, he hit me. And dad looked at him and said, and you're old enough not to hit back. Oh, nice. I you're like old it. enough to find another solution <laughs> oh, to this. Nice. Okay. And I think that that's, it's not about letting people run over you, but it's about finding other solutions. So it gets back to that thing I said earlier. It comes down to resourcefulness. It comes down to thinking with your head and not with your fist because we can do it we're that kind of a, we have an incredibly developed brain folks Re regardless of what your specialties are you have amazing gifts in your head and the key is to learn how to use them because it's not just one gift all of us have many gifts to give and ways to help people be happy be joyful and just be their best selves. Mm -hmm. And when somebody fails to be their best selves, let's help them get there. And Tam, you're right. Religion is part of that. Be part of a village or a community. But there again, we seem to have a society that is less religious, certainly, than when I grew up. And I think part of that has to do <clears throat> with this and this antithesis that some people have put between science and religion. Well, so I'll we've share talked about with, that before. I'll share yeah. with you something that my father said when I was little, and I love science, and he loved science, and he was an avid, avid gardener. I mean, he used to grow tomatoes in our basement 
all year round with grow lights. And he would say to me, study the flower and look intensely into it and learn how the flower works and you'll find God. Whoa, interesting. When you really look into how the world and the universe functions, you'll find God. So what do we do with 5784, the Jewish calendar? We recognize that we disagree with the fundamentalists by a week. I don't think it was a 24 hour, seven day week. I don't care how many billions of years it was. It was God's week. It's not meant for me to tie that to my current understanding. When we put unrealistic boundaries, on God and religion, then we cheapen religion. If we have to come up with something fantastical, it's probably a story and not meant to be a detailed scientific fact. For example, if you have to put the animals into suspended animation to make Noah's Ark work, then you don't need Noah's Ark in the first place. Oh. We'll talk more about Noah and his Ark next week or weeks following. This is Rabbi Shafir Loeb, and this is Third Friday. Everybody have a wonderful weekend, and uh, see you next week, God willing. All right. And Congregation Eitz Chaim, your Jewish home on the Treasure Coast. Congratulations again. Thank you. I am glad to have that barrier done. You've been listening to Ask a Rabbi right here on WPSL, Port St. Lucie. Talk of the Treasure Coast, webcaster to the world.